Okay, now that we have our render basically to where we want it, let's begin to set it up for multiple passes to render it to a single EXR file. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to the scene and we're going to want to come over down here into our uh, layer uh, editor. And if you don't have it open, sometimes the channel, you know, none of them will be open. You can hit channel box, layer, you know, make that go away, the attribute editor down here. But what we want is this layer editor. And down here, you've got display layers, render layers, and animation layers. We're going to want render layers. Now, we automatically have associated with this a master layer uh, file, which is basically everything in the scene uh, at all times. But we don't want to use that one. So I'm going to just come over here, select everything in the scene, and I'm just going to come here and add another layer. And I'm going to come up, right click, and I'm going to go add selected objects. Sometimes you got to do it twice. You know what, it's going to make me want to open that up. So I'm just going to shift click to make sure that we add everything in there. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. Sometimes it'll do it all at once. Sometimes it won't. But let's make sure that we get everything in the scene. Let's make sure the light is in the scene. And let's call this one main render. Okay, so that's our first one. So I'm going to just save this. I'm going to save this as version 02. Now that I've got it, the file saved, we can begin to set this up. So what we want to do is we want to open up our render globals and we want to come over here to the passes section. And the first thing we want to do is we want to add scene passes. And we're going to do that by clicking this button up here. So this is a very simple process, right? And the first thing we're going to want to do is you can see all these different passes that we can automatically associate with any render going through Mental Ray using those Mental Ray uh, materials that end in passes or any of the uh, uh, Maya materials for the most part. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want our beauty pass. And let's just grab camera depth beauty, okay, diffuse material color, diffuse, actually let's just grab that diffuse for right now, direct irradiance, incandescence, because we know we assign that one uh, to some, some direct incandescence, indirect, okay, opacity, reflection, refraction. We're going to grab the shadow, but we're going to take a look at it and see what some of the problems directly are with it. And uh, specular, right? So, and then I'm going to go create and close. So now we have all the passes defined that we want, but we've got to associate it with our render layer. So right here with our render layer selected, you can just click that and you can see that all the passes have now moved down to that section and basically that's it so let's snap off a new render here uh, with all of our passes let's just make sure that our render settings are okay make sure that we're rendering to EXR which we are we've got our passes set up all of our ray tracing and all of our final gather settings are the same. Our quality setting is all the same. Let's just make sure that we've got it set to 32-bit, which we do. And I think we are ready to go. So with that, I'm going to hit the render button. I'm going to pause the video, and I'll come back when the render is all done. Now that our render is completed, we're going to want to open up that EXR file in a competent compositing application such as Nuke. Uh, Nuke is what I'm going to use. It seems to be the easiest. It handles uh, EXR files very, very well. Uh, so with that said, let's just move on over to Nuke and let's take a look at what we got. Okay, so now we're in Nuke and you can see I've got the EXR file loaded up. Uh, we're seeing kind of a washed out image, which is a little uh, strange to us. Uh, uh, it doesn't quite look like our render, but that's no big deal. It's supposed to look like that. That has to do uh, with uh, the linear color space uh, and uh, keeping it linear, everything 0 to 1, so that we never have values outside of 0 to 1. And then performing the pr correct lookup, what we rendered for, 
uh, uh, on the image to process it down so that we can look at it at 8 bit uh, on our monitor and see the correct information for our monitor. And it's important to note that when you're rendering this way, what you're really doing is you're keeping the most values and you're not crushing anything until you decide to go to whatever output device you want to go to. And I mean, depending upon whether you're going to film or, you know, 10-bit DPX or 16-bit Cineon or whatever, you know, uh, uh, it is. Uh, it, 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 this way is you're going to have the most information to go to the most variety of formats because everything is going to be in 32-bit. You can do all of your uh, uh, color correcting and whatever kind of compositing you want to do it, it, it with very high values and then crush it down uh, for video, for instance. And for video, uh, chances are you're going to either be using uh, something like sRGB if it's going to, uh, you know, the, the web or something like that potentially, or Rec. 709 if you're using H.264, or if that's depending upon the, 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 the video uh, codec that you're using and the device that you're going to. Um, and then, you know, Cineon, which is it's obviously blown out. You can't really see uh, what it's. We don't have the correct lookup table on that, too, to log it down anyways. Um, and then they give you some gamma choices, gamma 1.8, which is basically going to be uh, a gamma 1.8 or a gamma 2.2 are going to be basically very similar to the sRGB gamma. You can see that they're almost identical, if not identical. I, uh, we could do a compare take a look and see what was going on. But that's, again, not really the point of this lesson. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it at sRGB for now. And you can see what we have here is our main render. Well, in Nuke, if you come on over here uh, in the viewer and look where it says RGB and click that down, you notice you have all these other layers that we've rendered. And these are the layers that came out of uh, Mental Ray uh, and Maya. So for instance, we got our Beauty Pass, which is going to be exactly, obviously, the same as our uh, our main RGB pass. Um, and then we're going to have the camera Z depth. Uh, I'm not going to go into this right this second, but there is information here. You've got to pull and extract that information by normalizing the values uh, with like a grade node uh, attached to the Z depth. Um, uh, we'll do that at another time. So then you're going to have your diffuse, and you can see that everything is working correctly. Direct uh, direct lighting, uh, which is basically just showing you where the lighting is. We actually don't need that. Incandescence, showing the incandescence of the incandescent plane, the one uh, material that we've defined uh, as incandescence. Our indirect lighting, our final gather, a little splotchy, no big deal. Our opacity. Now this is interesting because opacity, just so that you know, uh, represents basically alpha. Which is one of the reasons that uh, Maya and Mental Ray sometimes have some hard times communicating with alphas. Because, and uh, one of the things that we'll see if we look down, for instance, I rendered out that shadow pass, but I remember I wanted to talk about it, and you can see that even, uh, you know, that 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 there is no real shadow pass, and partially that's because uh, uh, you can see that. Uh, the one thing that seems to be kind of working correctly is the incandescent plane, which is a uh, 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 it, 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 uh, is is a Maya material, uh, and the mental ray materials will not work with the the shadow system. And I I, I believe that it has something to do with that opacity information uh, and alpha, and that the way that they handle it is just too different. That it's very hard in order to extract a correct shadow pass uh, from all that information. Uh, with that said, so here we go. This is our refraction pass. Okay, our reflection pass. Uh, back to our opacity, our indirect illumination, our incandescence. And then way down here at the bottom is our specular. So, I mean, those are all of our passes. Uh, that's They're all rendered into a single EXR file, which is nice. They're all at very high quality, 32-bit. Uh, now, obviously, those channels would have to be extracted correctly and composited uh, uh, and uh, put back together. And then you can tweak each individual one. You can apply bloom to your specular or uh, whatever it is that you want to do. In Nuke, what we do is we just use a shuffle. And uh, what we can do is we can just shuffle that information into the RGB channel. So for instance, I want to say in diffuse out RGB, 
and I want to look at that and I want to put it on the RGB obviously and you can see now that my only diffuse information is going into the viewer. With only the uh, diffuse information right now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to copy and paste this node, the shuffle, and just dial it into uh, and actually you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this a couple times because we're going to need a few of them. And this is the first one that we're going to deal with, and it still sets a diffuse, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this one to uh, reflection, well, to reflection. And just to make sure that we get it, there we go. And if we take, boom, we can see that we've got our reflections, okay? And I'm going to want to plus those with a merge node together. I'm going to also copy this one and paste it a couple times. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go A over B. And you can see that as soon as I set that to plus that our reflections pop on top of the surface. It's still missing the refractions right there so that's going to be our next layer. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to dial that in and I'm going to come here and I'm going to set that to refractions. I'm going to grab another one of these and again it's A over B. Okay is set to refraction. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set this to plus. Move it over to there and you can see our, our refractions have now come in. Okay, So then on top of the refractions I'm going to want to come over here and I'm going to want to dial that in. And this one I'm going to set to uh, our specular right there. Okay, Again it's just real simple A over B. Okay, You need to set this to plus. There you can see our reflections, I mean our uh, uh, specular highlights just came in, right? See? Right, very simple. Okay, the last one right here that we've got is our incandescence that we're going to set. Again, just real simple, A over B. Okay, Let's set that to uh, incandescence, which is there. Again, that one goes to plus. And you can think of plus as just like it's really just adding two colors together, you know, right? I mean, it's very simple stuff. So we're going to need one more of these. And you can see now that we have all of our stuff in there, we're just kind of missing that bounce light. Right, and that's about it. Final gather. So that's the last thing that we're going to add in on top of everything. Okay. Okay. So come over here and set this one to the uh, indirect. Right. There's our final gather. Again, just plus it on in and you can see now we've got our color bleed back in there right see you can see the difference there's their illumination from the plane and so basically what we've done now is we've rebuilt our beauty pass we can get rid of that it's no longer needed I'm just going to maximize this real quickly here and uh, just kind of organize this real quickly so move those up a little bit that up a little bit. So, you know, the purpose of this is really now that, so for instance, here, let's see, we've got our reflections, our refractions, this should be our specular, right? Yeah, it is. So I could come over here and I could add in a glow into the specular. If we wanted, we could just look at that, see, work with it that way, you know, you could tint it a color, like let's say if we wanted to add in some blue, I mean, yeah, right? Just add a little bit of tint of blue. You know? Uh, if you want to just look at the effect only and see what's happening, that's what you're doing there. How bright do you want it to be? The glow. You know? Uh, uh, tolerance is going to be, you know, constrict the glow to the specular highlights, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of fun stuff. You can, you know, how much you want to bloom it out, 
right? So it just basically gives you all the power. I mean, obviously that doesn't look right, but uh, it just gives you all that power of what you want when you're able to reconstruct your shading network in a compositing application so that you can tweak your renders and make them look as good as you want.